up guys? My name is Zach and today I am in the beautiful state of Indiana doing a review of a 1988 Mazda RX-7. Now I know I've done a 1988 Mazda RX-7 on the channel before, but if you can tell by my voice, this one is a little different. So up front we got a 1.3 liter bridge ported rotary engine and down below is a 5 speed manual gearbox. If you want my opinions of a totally stock RX-7, I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, this one is not stock, and we'll get on to that later. First, let's get it out of the way, the interior. The interior is pretty basic. Seats actually grab you pretty nice. You got a radio with a cassette player. This car still has working air conditioning, power steering. You got that awesome gauge cluster that goes up to 8,000, which this car actually needs. Manual windows, sunroof. It's pretty basic, and this is a, a gray cloth color. The seats are gray, everything in here is pretty gray and orange, which I really do like the orange accents. I do like that, that is a nice feature. God, I love sunroofs. So let's talk about that 1.3 liter rotary engine. This car has what's called a bridge port. And if you don't know what that is, that's where you cut larger holes in the intake and exhaust to allow more fuel to come in. Bridge porting is one of the most aggressive ports you can do to a rotary. Stereotype on them. Well, this one fulfills that stereotype. This thing sounds 
things. Now there are some downsides to a bridge port. Mainly being drivability goes down a little bit. That's actually why Dylan didn't do a full bridge port on this car. He still wanted to be able to daily drive it. He kept the power steering, he kept the AC. It's still a drivable car. I mean, he drove it an hour and a half on the highway just to go to the show in Chicago. But you do have that higher idle. You're gonna burn through gas a lot more. Dylan says that on the highway, fifth gear, not wailing on it, he can push maybe 20 miles to the gallon. But on these back roads, I can't imagine it gets out of the single digits. You also have that sound, which to me, I love the sound. But your neighbors at one in the morning might not like the sound if I'm honest. Also, these cars had what's called passive rear steering, which means when you go hard into a corner, the back wheels will just turn a little bit to help you with the corner, which is nice, but after 30 some years, those bushings start to go bad and you get a little bit of shake in the tail end. Kind of like when a dog is super excited that you're home. Maybe this thing's just excited to see you. So would I bridge port my RX-7 or would I buy a bridge ported RX-7? Yes and yes, and let me expand on both. First of all, I would definitely, definitely bridge port my RX-7 if I wasn't gonna daily it. They're just harder to daily and they're really loud if you don't have a good setup. Fortunately, this car does have a good setup, but some bridge ports can get really loud. Now, would I buy a bridge ported car? Yes, but I would be careful. And the reason for that is, is that you can bridge port the car on your own. You can take a Dremel tool and port it. No one's stopping you from doing that. That's actually what Dylan did to this car. He did it himself. He bought the proper templates, tools, and all that stuff, but he did it himself, which is fine. Dylan knows what he's doing. This isn't his first time around. But some people don't know what they're doing. And some people do just cut holes in the irons. And sometimes even to no avail. It might not even make power. If you're going to look at a bridge port, just ask who did it. You know, just like you would if you're looking at a rotary, you should say if it's been rebuilt, ask by who. Their cousin Jim might be a great rotary enthusiast and he might know a lot about it. He also might not, so you gotta be careful with that. Like I said before, this car's been put on the dyno, which is really cool, because then you know exactly how much it's making. But also, this car was dynoed last week, and while Dylan was, and while the car was on the dyno, the driver's side rear tire actually exploded. <laughs> so it actually has new tires, but I'll show the clip. 